That is not dead, which can eternal lie, and with strange aeons even death may die. Because today we're back doing more of the customers always wrong. Hooray! More bad receipts! It's been a while since we've done one of these, that's why I figured we should open with a little HP Lovecraft undead quote there. What do you guys think? I think it was apropos. Because these drinks are evil. We've been waiting for more crazy receipts to come in. And of course, this is always done in an unofficial and unwilling partnership with our friends at Mover and Shaker, who just have an Instagram filled with these things. And so, kudos, Mover and Shaker. Uh, thank you for the for the for the sweet receipts. So I'm just gonna pull one out at random. Oh, this is an easy one. It's a half and half. It's a half Guinness, half Sprite. Okay. Guinness and Sprite. God damn. What was the episode of Marathon where we kept having to add Sprite to things and it was awful? Oh God, I don't remember. I think it might have been one of these. I remember we had to do a Sprite Hatton, a Sprite in Manhattan. I just remember oh. specifically being oh. surprised like how bad Sprite made everything. This glass is beat to hell because it's just a water glass I have from upstairs. It tells you a lot about my drinking habits to learn that I do not own a pint anywhere. I don't know what should be on top. I'm gonna try putting the Sprite on the bottom because Guinness tends to be the thing on top of a half and a half, so. There you go. Now, the truth of the matter is, this might be a really cool idea now that I'm thinking about it. It could just be like a really weird Rattler. Rattler is like a lemonade and beer. And by lemonade, I do mean like European lemonade, which is Sprite, basically. As far as I'm aware, I guess I could be wrong on that. I think you guys call lemon and lime soda lemonade, whereas for us, lemonade is sugar, lemons, and water. So this is really weird looking because it's Guinness, but you see the carbonation from the Sprite is rising through it. You don't usually see that with Guinness. Guinness is um, nitrogenated, it's not carbonated. And so it actually, the nitrogen comes right out and it goes flat very quick. The uh, nitrogen is not like carbonation. It doesn't work the same way. And that's what it is, by the way. Guinness should be kind of flat when you drink it. A lot of beers should be kind of flat when you drink it. It's just strange looking. It's Guinness, but it looks like a Coca-Cola and it never occurred to me that it would look like that until I am now looking at it. I mean, so I know you probably think I'm just drinking Guinness right now, but I'm not. Even though visually it looks like they're not mixed. They're mixed. They could be mixed more, but you definitely get Sprite right away in that sip. That is a lot better than I would have expected it to be. And it's funny because I looked at that and said, that is insane. And then as I was pouring it, I started thinking, wait a minute. Like, it's sweet, but it's not super duper sweet. Probably will be when I get towards the bottom. It's going to get sweeter and sweeter. It's like... Mostly Guinness with a little extra lemony lime kick to it. It is. It's like a Guinness Rattler. Uh, it, not bad. It's not as crazy as Instagram would have us all believe. I kind of like it. I would never order one ever again, but that's for other reasons too. Like, it's just not my thing. So I'm going to mix it up now just because I'm curious. Obviously, this is going to destroy the beautiful effect we have, but let's see what happens if we truly try to blend it up. Just from a flavor perspective, I'm actually interested. Yeah, about the same, honestly. You get a little bit more Sprite expression. I don't know about other beer drinkers, but I find that Guinness has sort of a bitterness at the finish of its flavor profile. It does round that off, which is funny to me because I've said, I just said that I, I, there are other porters and stouts that I like a little better than Guinness. It's not my first go-to, but actually here, this kind of rounds that off and makes it read that way a little bit more. Like I, I like a Sam Smith's porter quite a bit. Yeah, it's like the Sprite makes the Guinness less interesting, but the Guinness makes the Sprite more interesting. Yeah, that's pretty much on the nose. Yeah, I'd say that's accurate. It's growing on me too. It's not the worst, it's not the craziest thing I've ever had. I do wonder what it'd be like with something better than Sprite. Like if you had like a San Pellegrino lemon soda or something like that. All right, let's see what's up next in the old Skull of Doom and we'll make it right after this. Meredith, Greg. Mark, Thrive Market's pretty cool, right, isn't it? Let's open this box and see what we got because Thrive Market is the sponsor of this episode. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring how to drink. Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store. They make all kinds of neat, healthy foods affordable. In fact, they guarantee you're gonna save money on things like dark brown sugar and a pet bowl scrubber. Meredith, what did we order? That's for me. Okay. Plant-based chili, which is probably for me. That sounds great. And, ooh, chickpea snacks. I like the sound of that. I thought we could use some how to drink snacks on set. Yeah. You know, with Thrive though, if you found a lower price on any of these things anywhere, Thrive is gonna match it. That's how they guarantee the savings. As a member, there's a whole section of the app and the website that is going to tell you what deals are currently available to you so you can save money on your favorite products and brands, like whole psyllium husks, which actually I, I eat these every day. 
I don't, I'm not used to seeing colon cleanser on the side of the can, but I do have two tablespoons of whole psyllium husks a day. Um, my doctor told me I should. My doctor. She said it would help me reduce my cholesterol. And it has. A lot of people, they don't live near a grocery store that carry the kind of quality foods that they happen to be looking for. And if that's you, maybe Thrive can help because Thrive ships to your home. You don't need to live right near them. So if you're looking for stashers, this is how to drink, loves these. Uh, or assorted recycled microfiber cloths. They are gonna have you covered right at your own home. Meredith, I feel like everything is a subscription these days, don't you? I do. Some people are probably juggling a bunch of them because they're like subscription people. Well, if you are into subscriptions, one of the neat things about Thrive is that you can replace multiple subscriptions with one subscription to Thrive. Top quality grocery items, organic kids products, sustainably sourced meat, non-toxic beauty products. You got all kinds of stuff over at Thrive and it comes in a box. Listen, if you like it, if you're interested, you wanna try Thrive out, click on the link in my description or go to thrivemarket.com slash how to drink. You're gonna get 30% off of your first order and a free gift worth up to $60 when you join Thrive Market today. Thank you, Thrive, for being the sponsor of this episode. And now back to the How to Drink show. All right, up next, we're gonna do espresso martini, but with Red Bull? I don't know what could possibly be going on in your head that you would want such a thing. Seems like an unholy idea, an awful idea, but that's what they want. I don't know, I'm gonna take the espresso itself. The coffee is gonna come out. We're gonna replace it with Red Bull, because I'm not really sure else how do you do that. And coffee foams. Shaken coffee will develop, because of the acids in it, will develop a little bit of a frothy head, which is kind of part of the iconic look of an espresso martini. We're not gonna have that here. I don't know, there was a part of my brain that was like, maybe we throw an egg white in this. We're gonna use coffee liqueur. Maybe we'll get there anyway. I'm gonna try to make the best Red Bull espresso martini I can and put a little bit of thought into this and stuff. I, I just don't know, it's a weird, it's a task. We can't shake Red Bull. I mean, I guess we could, but we really shouldn't. <laughs> Maybe we should. We could shake and then stir. It's a crazy idea. I wanna shake it because I wanna give this thing every opportunity to have a foamy head. I don't even need to stir it. I could add the Red Bull to the shaker and then pour from the shaker and just that should do enough to get them integrated. I don't know, this is a crazy concept. It might be amazing, I don't know. So we're gonna start with a half an ounce of simple syrup and I'm gonna modify this recipe a little bit as I go because there might be a way to make a drink out of this that's actually Drinkable? I don't know if it'll ever be good. Half an ounce now of Kahlua. Go more like three quarters. All right, now I need some vodka. I'm gonna use two ounces of Absolute. And uh, just for this first go, we're just gonna not think about this very much at all. And we're gonna throw an ounce of Red Bull straight in there. Normally, I would never shake anything that's carbonated. Red Bull's actually pretty lightly carbonated, and also it's now got a lot of other stuff around it, so I think we're probably safe. We're gonna crack some ice. We're a little low on ice, so we're gonna be a little bit careful about how we use the stuff. Ooh, interesting. It's fizzing. <laughs> that is not appealing looking. Well, there it is. It's hideous. It looks like one of the ugliest drinks I've ever seen. Usually you float a couple of uh, beans on top, but I think there's fat chance of them floating. All right, they float, but they're not gonna stay put. We'll just do one. Usually you have a nice, you know, little head on there that they'll sit on top of. Here we go. One espresso martini, but with Red Bull. Whoa, that is sweet. Oh God. Oh, that's terrible. Fuck. Jesus, man. That tastes like battery acid or what I imagine battery acid to taste like. Don't think I've ever tasted battery acid. Why would you think that about me? I've never tasted battery acid. Ah, it tastes exactly like battery acid. That is awful. You get the faintest hint of coffee, mostly just like sickly sweet Red Bull. I mean, it is so sweet, man. It's fucking gross. Ugh, I hate that. What is the taste of Red Bull? Oh God, it tastes like violets. It tastes like violet and sort of coffee, not quite coffee, but mostly just sweet violet flavor. Blech. Oh, that's so bad. That's a lot worse than I thought it was gonna be. Blech. I gotta do one more sip. Might be like blackberry notes or some kind of, yeah, like wild berry kind of thing happening in there. It tastes like cough syrup. 
tastes like cough syrup and battery acid. I honestly, though, I, I want to give it another go because like, it's just such a stupid and insane idea that I kind of want to try to make it work. I'm sure that this is what that person got. Careful what you wish for, you might get it. But uh, uh, they got what they deserved. But I think that there might be a way to make something with Red Bull and coffee. I don't know, it's just a stupid, I don't know. I'm interested, I wanna try something. I don't think that there's anything there, but the challenge compels me. It was a slow night and you came into my fancy bar, my very fancy bar, and you said, cheerio old chap, I want something like an espresso martini, but with Red Bull. And I had the time, maybe I could come up with something that I, what I'm about to make now. And maybe this will also be garbage, I don't know. Let's start over. One of the things I want to achieve is I want this to have a nice frothy head. So I'm pretty sure an egg white will go in at some point. I'm gonna do one and a half ounces of Mr. Black. I want to increase our level of coffee-ness in here. And I'm gonna do one and a half of vodka. So we're 50-50, right? Uh, let's do like half an ounce of creme de cacao. We're gonna hold off on our Red Bull for now. Coffee is pretty acidic, so I think that we can add an egg white to it and expect that to froth up nicely. And if you're looking for a vegan alternative, aquafaba is your friend. That's the water that comes out of a can of beans. Probably somebody who sells it just like aquafaba you can just buy. And by can of beans, I mean chickpeas. Black beans is also aquafaba, but that would be unattractive. Although not in this drink, but we're fine actually. <laughs> and I think we're ready to dry shake right now. Add some ice. One ounce of Red Bull, but I'm gonna try to snake it down the side a little bit so that it doesn't have too much of an opportunity to destroy my nice egg white. Maybe give it a little slosh. And now we're gonna pour our drink. Much more attractive right away. Got that nice frothy top. Do our little three bean float. Oops, that one slipped away from my fingers, but it worked. And I would even do drops of bitters, grab a pick. I don't know, just having fun. All right, here we go. Let's see how this version of a Red Bull espresso martini goes. It's much more balanced flavors between the Red Bull and the, and the coffee. You register the coffee much better. The problem is, is that you can still taste Red Bull. <laughs> this is definitively as good as you're gonna make any Red Bull espresso martini. God help you if you ever need to create such a thing. I cannot imagine how or why the universe would conspire to make that happen for you, but I would assume that you should get yourself to some religious order and beg for forgiveness right away. Any order will do, whoever's nearby. But yeah, I mean, this is as good as I guess. Why did I add creme de cacao? Because coffee and chocolate are so close in flavor and I just wanted to like help it come through just a little bit stronger with that against the saccharine extremely sweet taste of Red Bull. Yeah, the, the flavors are balanced. They are kind of in harmony here, in harmony, in tension between coffee and Red Bull and the Red Bull kind of tastes like, I honestly, I do see violet. I do see like some kind of cough syrup thing too and sweet, um, which is why we took the simple out, which is why we got rid of the Kahlua. It's the only additional sweetness we added was the creme de cacao. It's still not like, it's not good. I would really be interested in seeing what other people think of this if they go out of their way to make it. I also do not blame you if you don't. I just don't know why such a thing would exist. My only other thought with this in particular is that I might have also wanted a twist of lemon on it. Sometimes lemon and espresso go together so nicely, particularly like lemon oils. As you can see, this is producing a tremendous amount of lemon oils. Just do this right next to the glass. And then I'll probably just try to ring the glass with this or make like a spiral. There you go. It's fucking different, that's for sure. Uh, let's just see how it is with a little lemon oil in there as well. And honestly, it does help it. it. Helps it a lot. I don't actually get the lemon oil at all. Maybe I do actually faintly. But what it does is it gives the coffee actually a little bit more punch. That little extra ooh, helps it to the coffee to just edge out the Red Bull, which skews the balance of the drink a little bit. I think in the coffee's flavor, which helps it, I still don't know why this drink would ever have to exist. I hate it, but it's a billion percent better than that other god awful thing. But yeah, I guess if you wanted to have a Red Bull espresso martini, or if you have a need for one on your bar menu, there it is. <laughs> so the customer was wrong. Oh, customer's wrong. I mean, the, the original, the first one was terrible, terrible. 
this is at least interesting. There's nothing else to say, but we've spent enough time on this. Let's move it right along. What's next in my skull of doom? Oh, cool. Rumple and milk, apparently eight times. I've actually never had rumple. So we're gonna find out what that's all about right after this. All right, we're gonna do it now. We're gonna make a little rumple stilts and milk here. So rumple and milk is just gonna be rumple and milk. Rumple mins is a peppermint schnapps of about 100 proof. I've never had it. Uh, people say it's horrific. I'm gonna have a little sniff, I'm gonna have a little taste. Here we go. Why do people hate that? It's just a peppermint schnapps. People make like it's such a big deal about how awful rumple mins is. I think it's because when you were in high school, you guys were probably doing stupid shots of this that you shouldn't have been doing. It's fine. It's 100 proof peppermint schnapps. It's fine. Yeah, it's not my favorite peppermint schnapps. Maybe I'm a freak. I don't know. It tastes fine to me. All right. Well, no, no mystery here. We're just going to do an ounce and a half of rumple. And I'm not going to finish it, by the way. I just want to kind of get a nice fill on the glass. And an ounce and a half of milk. Rumple and milk. Mmm. Delicious. Turned kind of blue, like lightly blue in the rumple. Uh, Bob's your uncle. This is rumple. Is that supposed to be bad? I don't know. It tastes like uh, it's on its way to Christmas cookies, honestly. I, I have no complaint about this. This isn't bad. I don't know who would want it. It's a freaking weird ass thing to want. It's kind of missing something though. It needs a little chocolate. Now we're talking. Now that's gonna be lovely. Now we've got a peppermint patty. I wanna say like, you probably have thought like, ugh, milk. It doesn't curdle. There's no lime or lemon in there. There's no acid. And the milk actually just gets thinned out you know, by virtue of it being half rumple. It's just minty milk. Now it's chocolate minty milk. And it's amazing. It tastes like a glass of Christmas. I would be sick if I drank it all because I don't have that much sugar in my body anymore. Don't knock until you tried it. That's all I'm gonna say. Meredith, what do you think is the occasion when you would order seven rumples of milk? <laughs> what is it? Post Hell Week uh, oh, celebration. Yeah. Okay. Hell Week is like some kind of frat thing. Yeah. Sorority thing. Yeah, I think so. All right, up next, we're gonna take a look at Table 52, who's ordering a Fireball Bloody Mary right after this. Okay, up next, we've got a uh, House Bloody Mary made with Fireball. Fireball, Fireball, fucking, just fucking Fireball. All right, well, I'm gonna start with four ounces of Campbell's tomato juice for the fine tomato juice. You know, I kind of like tomato juice. As soon as I opened that, I was like, mmm, smells good. You say tomato or tomato out there where you're from, Meredith? Tomato. Nobody says tomato. No, it's true. I've never met anyone who says Nobody tomato. Nobody says tomato. Tomato, 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 tomato. Hey, let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> now I want to get uh, two dashes of Tabasco. And by two dashes, I mean two quantities that are a dash, not two shakes. Do you think that the idea here is that they wanted the fireball instead of the vodka? I don't know why it would matter because vodka is not really changing the flavor. So I feel like they wanted the cinnamon. Yeah, this is Bubby's prepared horseradish. And actually I'm pronouncing it wrong, by the way. If you ever see that, it says Bubby's. It's actually Bubby's. Bub, bub. Ah, uh, good amount. That's, that's a lot. I like a lot of horseradish in mine. Uh, Worcestershire, I love Worcestershire. Worcestershire, Worcester. If you really insist on ignoring most of the letters in the damn thing. And so here's the thing, the English will tell you, oh, but that's pronounced Worcester. Worcester sauce or something like that. And I would say, that is a regional pronunciation because in American English, that is pronounced Worcestershire. I just think that, that we have to accept the fact that there are regional pronunciations. I think it's really weird that we don't anymore. That used to be the whole thing. You pronounce a word in your local dialect, not just by adapting and imitating the style of another. Two dash, whoa, that's okay. That was not really a dasher top. That was closer to a poor top. Well, I'll love that. That'll be a lot. That's great. A pinch of ground black pepper. More in a pinch. A smoked paprika, if you got it. Gonna be delicious. Now we need to get our fireball in there. There's been a, uh, a controversy lately. I've said that fireball cinnamon whiskey is also not whiskey, but apparently now fireball is coming out with a product called fireball cinnamon, which is very not whiskey. And there's been like some lawsuits over it actually, which I think is very funny. We're gonna put in two ounces of fireball. That's what my notes on this said to do because we're substituting the vodka for fireball. I already know this is gonna be very bad. Let's get uh, our other shaker. A cube of ice. And now we're gonna roll this drink. If you shake it, it will freeze. So we're just gonna do this until it's all over the table. <laughs> now, if you wanna get fancy fancy, you put one of these on one side and you hold your ice back. 
And now we can really throw our drink. Usually you use an old school one to do this. I don't happen to have an old school style one. Old school being 1800 style Hawthorne strainer. They don't sit on the top, they go down inside. Kind of like a julep strainer with a spring on it. If you ever wanted to do big throws like this, and I'm not particularly good at it, the trick is to start here and then pull back. All right, you can't do it just from, I mean, I guess somebody could. And I've seen people go like crazy far, and I've also seen people do stuff where they whip it and fling it and go sideways. I don't, it's all silly. So you can feel it getting colder as we do this. This, that oscillation. It's a big glass, all right? We need a lime wedge and a lemon wedge. I mean, we don't. We're just, this gilding the lily. You know what we need? We need a big old sprig of celery. Done. There you go. Woo! Oh, I forgot there was gonna be in there. Ooh. I totally forgot that was gonna be full of cinnamon. Oh my God, that is weird and bad. That is weird and bad. Oh man, baby. <sighs> I'm not joking. I forgot there was cinnamon in that. And I was like, mm, Bloody Mary. This is gonna be fine. Mm -mm -mm. Jesus Christ, that's, wow. I'm dizzy now. It tastes uh, very Christmassy in like the worst possible way. Ooh, you know what it tastes like? You know those pine cones that they cover in cinnamon smells that my wife won't let me buy? It tastes like that. It doesn't taste like Christmas. It tastes like the Christmas store. It tastes like that cinnamon broom that you're supposed to put someplace. You know the cinnamon broom? Cinnamon broom? Yeah, it looks like a witch's broom and it's full of cinnamon. No. You never seen that? No. Yeah, you put it around your house around the holidays. So your house smells like cinnamon? Yeah. It feels like it would just get shit everywhere. You don't, you don't sweep with it. You just put it around. It sits there, but even then, if you bump it, it's gonna... Like... I don't know. Let me tell you something. Many drinks are bad. Few drinks are this bad. This is a special kind of hell. Sweet, hot and spicy, cinnamon. Whoa, cinnamon on fish. It really gets into a cinnamon fish thing, which I think has gotta be the worster. There's not a lot of fish you wanna cover in cinnamon, and this is not one of them. I don't like this drink. No. Evil people came up with this drink. I can't, who would, maybe it's a prank. Maybe that's what this is. You want a Bloody Mary? You want Bloody Mary? Okay, three Bloody Marys. One of them with fireball. You know, maybe it was one of those. The person who does enjoy this, dangerous person. Not to be trusted. And it starts off so weird right away. The way that the cinnamon and the horseradish integrate is so bad. And then from there, it gets even worse. The cinnamon gets up under the fingernails of the Worcester sauce and it's just like cinnamon fish. Holy shit, that drink sucks. Oh my God. I'm not gonna fix it, it can't be fixed. It also has after notes of carpet store. Uh, I would call it a religious experience, but maybe it's like the opposite of that. What would be the opposite of a, like a- A satanic experience. A satanic experience, yeah. Well, that's also religious. What would be like a, um, a nihilistic experience? <laughs> it's a nihilistic experience. <laughs> and it's an existential experience is what it is. And in a fireball, Bloody Mary, you will find a void. And when you look into it, it will look back into you. The fireball Bloody Mary is the key to learning that uh, life is absurd. It might be actually a Dadaist drink. Okay, up next we've got our, I'm sorry, I just gotta move it on. I, I, I can't dwell anymore. I can't deal with it anymore. We're on to our final drink for this episode. Up next, right after this, we're gonna be making a Tangare Negroni, no vermouth, but sub red mold. What the fuck is Jesus Christ in hell? Now the time has come to say goodbye to all our friends. Fuck your life, screw your brain, drink away the pain. I mean, um, now it's time for us to make the final drink of this episode, which is a Tangare Negroni with no vermouth, sub red Bull. Otherwise known as the devil's piss, I can only assume. A Negroni, by the way, in case you're wondering, equal parts, gin, vermouth, red, uh, red bull. Uh, no, a Negroni is typically equal parts, gin, campari, and vermouth. Uh, of course, we're subbing out the vermouth for red bull. 
Uh, but I have done Negroni several times on the show. You can check them out in previous episodes. All right, let's start. We got a Tangare here. Yep. I guess it is Tankare. In my brain, it's Tangare. It's Tank. Actually, we should build this in the glass. This is not a drink that you typically do any other way. One ice cube and one and a half ounces of Tankare. One and a half ounces of Campari. And now we want one and a half ounces of the finest vintage of Red Bull, Eau de Convenience Store. Yeah, this can is already uh, aerated and plenty of Red Bull left. I don't know what that accent is supposed to be. Give that a, a generous little stir. Notice the aroma of sickly sweet garbage. Garnish that with a twist of orange. Why don't we make it pretty, if we can? There you go. I guess I didn't make it pretty. I kind of made it ugly, but uh, there it is. From that angle, it looks great. <laughs> I saw that on TikTok the other day and I thought I'd give it a try. Obviously, it takes a defter hand than mine. Uh, here we, actually, it's not so bad looking. It looks cool. Okay, here we go. Red Bull, uh, Red, Red Bull Negroni. Oh God, sweet love, oh my God. <gasps> wow. <laughs> oh my God. That's gotta be one of the worst things I've had on the show. Wow, that's, that's a big claim. It's not the worst. I'm putting it in the top 15 or 20, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I've been doing this for a long time. That is unreal. I was not ready for that. Holy shit. I gotta rethink some things. People always say like, you know, in the comments, I'll get worst drink I've ever had in my life goes in for another sip. And it's like, because it's my job, I'm a professional, I gotta do that. I genuinely dread going in for another sip of this, which doesn't happen that often on the show. I don't want to. Something incredibly bad is happening in the combination of those flavors. Campari is a pretty unforgiving spirit to begin with, particularly for me, I'm not like actually a huge fan. It's just, it is too bitter for me, which is funny because I don't like Campari, but I actually do like Fernet. Figure that one out. Uh, Fernet's a way more powerful, nasty flavor. So um, something really nasty happens with the gin and the Campari and the Red Bull. You would think that the Red Bull, which is sweet, wouldn't be the most insane substitution for a sweet vermouth. It's providing the sweet component of the drink. But no, that's actually not what's happening here. Somehow the way that the Red Bull is sweet, I think, cannot stand up in this drink. It falls flat in the most hideous and awful way possible. It is very bad and words kind of fail me a little bit beyond that. <sighs> Fucking hell, I gotta do this again. Oh, sweet mama motherfucker. Nose of orange, as you might expect. Oh my God, it tastes like puke. It tastes like vomit. That's what it is. It tastes like bile. The combination, oh Jesus. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, the combination of the Campari and the Red Bull tastes like fucking bile. Oh, like a bad night. You were young in college and you drank too much. You are fucked, you are fucked. You're fucking puke, 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 puke. It tastes like the morning after or the night before. I don't know. It tastes like puke. I don't know. I might even put this in the top five bad drinks. What do you think of the top five worst drinks? You, you probably remember them better than me. I don't know if I remember a lot of them. I know we did the Midori Margarita. That one was pretty nasty. Oh yeah, it was. The pineapple old fashioned, that stands out. We've done a couple okay ones with cowling, but anything with no, that just sticks out. No, cowling is never good. And then that one that I threw was like this Tabasco and mayonnaise was bad. This is in that category. This is that level of horrible for me. Oh God, I hate this drink. As the person what must take your licks for you, I am gonna have to go back in and see if I can pull anything more nuanced out of this than just vomit right in my mouth. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to, but you know, to science. Oh, the gin is helping it taste like vomit for sure. There it is, there it is. Campari is orangey. And so the first things you get, actually, if you take a teeny tiny sip, is gin and orange, actually. But like, the gin is not being helped in a positive way. 
possibly the worst possible expression of gin you can imagine. Not that Tanqueray is, but like here it is. Nasty gin. Bitter, earthy, straight up piney. I don't usually say the gin tastes like piney, but this does kind of taste like the, what I imagine. Chewing on a scrub pine would taste like mixed with oranges, which does not make it better. And from there it evolves into oranges and puke, and then it's just puke, and it's bitter. It's very bitter. It's extremely bitter. And not like nice bitter, but like, it, bitter like a warning bitter. Like you're not supposed to consume this bitter. Like you're tasting something not for consumption. I'm just gonna say it, I think this is like fetish bitter. I think that there is probably a person for whom this drink is their fetish. They got some degradation kink or they're into some kind of, you know, masochism or something. Um, they're probably also into having their balls stepped on. I don't know, like it just seems like this is a drink that I imagine is comparable to having your balls stomped on, on purpose. It's a, like liquid punishment. That's a good name for this drink, liquid punishment. It's not for me, but I don't want to kink shame. <laughs> do I have to do any more work now? I think we're done. I okay. think that's it. I think the customer was wrong. Yeah, for the most part today, the customers have been wrong. There was one who was weird, but I guess correct. <laughs> well, thank you guys um, so much for making me tap dance for you. It's been a lot of fun. I'm going to clock out now. Thank you guys so much for watching the show. If you like it, um, there's going to be more episodes online. You can find me on the social media places. If you really want to help me make the show, there is a Patreon. We have a private Discord for patron members. It's kind of cool. We hang out in there. We have a good crew. Swing on by if you want to join the Patreon. I will see you next time on another episode of How to Drink. And until then, I'm going to be taking a nap because I don't think I have any more will to live. Bye-bye now.